Welcome back in Italy. Welcome back in uh, Linear Rock Studio, Marty. Thank you very uh, much. Good to see you again. Okay, thank you very much. Your last album is titled Bad DNA and was being released last August. Uh, and then you made also an European tour playing in Italy for two shows. Mm -hmm. How could you describe that album? Well, Bad DNA is an album that came out only in Asia, only in Japan and Korea and the Asian countries. So um, on my European tour, I didn't really play much of Bad DNA at all. Actually, nothing. Okay. Sometimes, if we had to do like a third encore song, I played the song Bad DNA from that record. But uh, nobody knows it because it didn't come out in Europe. But a lot of actually, a lot of my European fans are just really maniac fans and they find the CD from like the internet or from a Japanese website or something and they they have bad DNA but uh, it didn't officially come out in Europe. Okay, uh, t we can talk about uh, your next album now. I don't know if you're writing, recording, uh, when go out this album. In yeah. general you uh, recording an album every year so I think also uh, after the, the, the summer can go out this new album. Can you yeah. uh, talk about the, uh, this? Well, it's not like on a schedule, on a yearly schedule, but it just <laughs> happens to be that way. <laughs> I wind up doing a lot of albums. Um, my next album is called Tokyo Jukebox 2. And uh, in 2009, I released Tokyo Jukebox, which uh, was a good success for me in Japan, and it came out worldwide. Yeah. And um, so the record company asked if I wanted to do a part two yeah. to it, and I was very excited to do that because actually... Tokyo Jukebox is one of my favorite albums that I've ever done. So uh, when it came time to do a second album, it was a lot of fun choosing the songs and doing new arrangements and recording it, and I'm very happy about it. And it's almost finished. I, I recorded most of it before going on tour in Europe. Okay. So um, I'd say 11 songs are done now, and there's one more song that I'm going to finish in Japan after this uh, clinic tour and then the record's going to be done so I am very excited about it. So you think that uh, we go out after the summer? And, and September, September comes out in Japan and I'm Japan. really trying to get it released in Europe around the same time so maybe around the fall in Europe. Okay, okay. From metal to kind of rock you play different styles uh, showing you are a complete musician. Is there an album of your discography that you consider really special, and why? Why, everyone. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if I didn't feel that way about every record, I wouldn't want to release it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't finish a record and go, that's not very special, <laughs> let's release it anyway. No, I mean, every album that I do is like, that's 100% of where I am at that time. In that moment. So, you know, the most recent thing that is out there is Bad DNA, but... My newest one, Tokyo Jukebox, mm -hmm. is definitely the deepest and most special album ever because it's the most recent and because it's got all of my experience put together and all of uh, the depth of everything that I've learned over the most uh, recent times and everything is in it and, and I'm very happy with mm -hmm. it so far. You are living in Japan for many years, and you work also in a, for a television, Japan, yes. Japanese television. What kind of audience is the Japanese? Uh, what kind of audience? Yes, for the concert and for the television. Uh, wow, it's completely Different. separate. Uh -huh. Yes, it's very interesting, because I do a lot of mainstream television. And uh, mainstream people who see the high exposure of television, they don't know me from my musical career. Oh. They know me from TV, so they have no idea that I've been releasing all these <laughs> records since I was a teenager. Yeah. And uh, some do, some do, but not all. Okay. And um, so it's very interesting when I meet people on the street or meet people at events, what they know me from. Because they say, oh, it's Marty, I've seen you on this show, I've seen you on that show. Yeah. And sometimes, oh, it's Marty, I've heard your record, Tokyo Jukebox. Oh, it's Marty, I heard you from Megadeth, or oh, I heard you from Cacophony. So it's always something different. different. But nobody knows everything. <laughs> it's very interesting. But uh, most, uh, I would say maybe 60, 70 percent of people in Japan know yeah. me from TV. And um, the rest of them know me from like the music that I mm -hmm. made. And what is the secret that made you love this nation so much? It's definitely the music. Um, the music just happens to the, appeal to me. Japanese. The melody or the Japanese music? Uh, or the it's just the whole... Japanese pop music scene in general 
is just so it's like tailor made for my taste it's very happy but it's very aggressive and very it's dense it's very thick it's like it's like if you have ice cream that's very very sweet it's not light it's not bitter it's just mm -hmm. very sweet so maybe it's too sweet for some people mm -hmm. but it just seems to be my perfect taste so i think the music the music uh environment of japan is very matching to my musical taste so it makes it very easy for me to participate in their music scene mm -hmm. okay and um, about japan how have you lived the dramatic uh, japanese earthquake and uh, have you tried some way to help them yeah, I was there when it happened. I was in the oh. studio with my band. In another town? In I Tokyo. In Tokyo. In Tokyo, oh, so yeah. So the studio was studio. going upside down and everything. It was crazy. It was very, very scary, frightening. Even for the weeks afterwards, it was frightening. So maybe one week after the earthquake happened, I flew to Los Angeles yeah. to take all of my guitars that were in L.A., maybe 20 guitars, from my Megadeth era, and I auctioned them all for the earthquake victims. So um, I sold all of my guitars from the Megadeth era, yeah. all my Jackson guitars, and uh, they really sold for a lot of money. So I was very happy to donate all that money yes. to the Japanese earthquake victims. And um, I felt I had to do something because I was so scared and I didn't know what to do. The only thing I can do is try to help. And I'm not a doctor, and I don't know anything about, you know, um, nuclear things or um, any kind of earthquake things or uh, building construction or anything. I don't know anything, but I know that all I could do was try to help. So by selling my guitars, I did something, and I feel better about it. It okay. took a little bit of the fear away somehow. Great thing. Okay. <clears throat> about guitar, you were in those era for Hibanets. What is now? Right now, I'm I'm using PRS guitars. PRS guitar. I've endorsed so many guitars over my career. Yeah. I mean, it started with Hurricane, then went to Carvin, then went to Jackson, then went to Ibanez, and then to PRS. But throughout the entire time, all the companies have been very cooperative with me, mm -hmm. and I wind up endorsing guitars for several different reasons. And as you grow as a musician, your needs change. Yeah and certain companies meet your needs better than others so they it's natural to change i mean even guitarists like santana and superstars like that um they change their guitar makers over the years and it just happens so um i i've enjoyed a lot of cooperation from a lot of great companies and they are all still very cooperative with me what is your favorite guitar to play in studio and play live it's there's the no favorite no favorite i you know as long as, by the song, so not or, even uh, that. I, 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 as long as the guitar is good, I like it. Okay. <laughs> if it stays in tune, I like it. And uh, I, I'm really not a big guitar guy. I just want a good quality instrument that stays in tune mm -hmm. and doesn't look like a coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> I like a color like this white, but yeah. like usually coffee tables are like wood colors, and I don't like that for guitar. Okay. Last year, it's. Um, being released uh, a book written by famous writer Joel McKeever. The title is uh, The Best uh, One and the Guitarist of Metal. And of course, uh, also you are being mentioned of your career with Cacophony and above all Megadeth. I don't know if you had read this. Uh, so, if you would choose the three best guitarists, uh, who could be for you? Uh, it's so hard because mm. what does the word best mean? best you know best guitarist was it what does it mean guitarist that he plays the most yeah plays the fastest plays the yeah, slowest very, very plays different. the nicest yeah. what does best mean mm -hmm. if a, if there's two guitar players and they both play great but one of them buys me lunch yeah. i like that guitar player he's best <laughs> he just bought me lunch so i really like that um, so it's hard to define best, eh? but you can maybe say favorite. What's your favorite three yeah. guitar players? And even that's difficult because yeah. there are so many wonderful I guitars. I can help you because the number one guitar, this is Dave Mustaine. Well, this uh, book is about heavy metal, right? Yeah, it's only metal. So 
you know, Dave Mustaine is heavy metal. And uh, he should be recognized for all of his contributions to heavy metal. So uh, I'll agree with that. Um, but my favorite three guitarists, I, I, you know, it's so hard. I mean, Elvis Presley, Elvis Presley, Elvis Presley. <laughs> I can change it, the, the question this way. If you would organize a, a G3 with uh, you as a liner, who could be the other two guitarists that play with you? To me, I mean, I, I would be honored to be asked to play on G3, but as a listener, that's a lot of guitar to listen mm. to, in my opinion. I, I don't know if I could listen to that much <laughs> guitar. Um, I don't know. Okay. It, yeah, I don't think I, I would be a good person to organize that, but you never know. You never know. I mean, I, on my concerts, I play two hours and 15 minutes, and it's a lot of intense guitar. And I feel that when we're done... I don't think the audience wants to hear one yeah. more note of guitar. Okay. But I could be wrong. Okay. You know, G3 is a superstar, fantastic guitarist, and, um, and they're really, really wonderful. But uh, I, I'm not... Uh, uh, that's a hard question again. Okay, no problem. Um, about the live shows during the concert in Tel Aviv, you have called on stage uh, Yossi Sassi of the Orphan Land Band, mm -hmm. and in Greece, the famous Gus G of the Aussie and Firewind. Yeah. How was born this guest uh, for two particular concerts? Well, Gus G has been a friend of mine for ah. a long time, many years. And um, he's actually the guy who I wanted to replace me in Megadeth. Mm -hmm. um, fantastic guitarist, and he is a metal guy. You know, he's yeah. really great. Um, and um, so we've been in touch, and uh, uh, I jammed with him in Japan, and we hang out, you know, whenever we're in the same city. And so it turned out that I played in his hometown of Thessaloniki, Greece, and it was just, you got to jam with yeah. us. And he did such a great job. Um, and um, Yossi from Orman, Orphan Land, I had never met before. Mm -hmm. And uh, the promoter introduced ah, okay. us. Okay. And he was such a great guy and a fabulous musician that uh, I really, really was proud to have him on stage with me. Okay. Um, a question about your past with Megadeth, you that gave you great sex. Uh, the last year that was the twenty. Gave me, gave me great sex. Success. Uh -huh. <laughs> it sounded like you said the the past years with Megadeth, where no. it gave you great sex. No, no success. We're so. not that kind of band. <laughs> Uh, the last year was the, the, the tour about uh, the anniversary tour of 20 years uh, with the masterpiece Rust in Peace, right? Uh, a great album that you also on, on the guitar. They call also Ellison on bass. Uh, have you wished some way to take part of the, that uh, event? Uh, no, no? Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. I mean, uh, I'm the all about... The past is past. The past is past. I mean, it was a wonderful album, and I'm sure they're doing a great job playing it. And uh, I, I'm so many fans want to hear it. Yeah, that, that's for I sure. That's Every time I do a guitar clinic, you know, mm. I'm signing that record like it's going out of style, and they they want me to play stuff from it. And uh, and uh, so it's I'm so happy about the great impact that that record has, um, and I'm sure they're making a lot of fans happy doing it. So I support them a thousand percent. Yeah. Okay. But it's not something that I'm really interested in redoing right now. So now the the future is. Uh, your next album, and yeah. you, you think that when go out the album for the next year, you start to, to tour again? Or uh, Yeah, you know what, this uh, whole, the only reason, the main reason I did this tour of Europe was to uh, kind of show everybody back in Europe that mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in touring Europe. So we played maybe 20 countries and uh, 25 in, in, Europe. in Europe, yeah, a lot. So all the Europe. <laughs> yeah, pretty much all of Europe, in Israel and... Uh, I just wanted to introduce my European fans and friends mm -hmm. to my uh, my Japanese band, Japanese band, and they loved them. The, the, the band, musicians are all, they're all Japanese, Japanese oh. and they're just just the hottest thing ever. I mean, I just love these guys, and we had so much fun. And it was really kind of a test to see what the climate was like and what the response was like and what we'd be like. Mm -hmm. You know, we've done a lot of touring and stuff, but never that much because Japan there's only so many cities where you can play in but in Europe there's a lot of cities yeah. and the my band did such a great job and so we now know that Europe is a very nice territory for us and uh, hopefully after we tour America and South America we come back to Europe okay okay thank you very much again thank you see you 
before the the the, the end of these uh, years. Uh, I hope so. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Because I don't know if you play in the festival in summer, but I think no. This, uh, not uh, this time uh, in Europe. No, time, no, probably the next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Nice talking Great. to you. All right. Okay.